approval, the Gorilla Show, featuring the world's only athletic ace. Joe weighs 80 pounds, and we believe he can lick any man in the audience with a pair of 12-ounce boxing gloves on. None too large, none too small. You have never laughed as much as you will at this show. And it, it is a scream from start to finish. Also, several big acts of audible. Don't miss it. It's the funniest show on earth. Since 1940, Bob and Mae Noel have devoted their lives and sacrificed their time to ensure the health and well-being of the most remarkable and fascinating members of the animal kingdom, the great apes. In return, the gorillas, orangutans, and chimpanzees have delighted, entertained, and educated people from all walks of life. As the founders of the chimp farm in Tarpon Springs, Florida, known as the first retirement home for aging primates, they have provided a place where sick, injured, and unwanted animals receive the love and attention that only 100% devotion can provide. This is the fascinating story of a remarkable family, both human and animal. I wouldn't advise anybody in the world to do what we're, we have done all these years, but I would never change what we have done. We got our first gorilla in 1950. We'd already gotten the earrings in 1948, and we'd had chimps since 1940. We were medicine show performers, and we finally decided that since there were a lot of medicine shows around and it was getting to be sort of old for, for the communities that we visited in, we decided to open up a little traveling museum or zoo, and we had little animals, native animals, took that on the road, and we decided that the show was a little bit lacking something, and so we, Bob happened to see uh, a chimpanzee in New Orleans at the Mardi Gras in what we call a store show. I, I always wanted a chimp from the time I've seen one. I just thought they were the funniest things I ever looked at, <laughs> acting like people, you know. and. Uh, I seen this chimp, $300, which was a big price then. So I bought the chimp, and uh, I thought I'd just take him and put him in a car and we'd go on home with him. But I didn't get two blocks till that thing started acting up there, throwing a fit. I thought he was having a fit, and he was just playing. He was big as he show off, you know. And we got home and we was just tired out and he was just having a big time. He was jumping up and down, having a big time. So Bob decided he had to have a chimp to add to the show, so he took the two monkeys out of the big cage. And not many of the rural folks had seen a chimpanzee, so it was a big drawing card. And then the people would gather and then we'd put on the exhibit inside to see the, the man ape and they'd go in and look at him. and then. We'd put him in a box, in a cage, and this went on until one night Bob couldn't get the chimp in the cage, and he had a kibitzer in the audience, and it, the man said, I could put that little thing in the box with one hand tied behind my back. So Bob said, all right, everybody go outside, and I'll charge 50 cents so I can pay this man $5 to do what he says he thinks he can do. So my father said, all right, <laughs> and come in and have a try at it. Well, it turned out to be a pretty good show. So, so we kind of featured that, that someone was going to go in the cage and see if he could put the monkey in the box. Well, this went on for, for quite a while, and then Snooky, as he got a little older, he, uh, he started nipping, biting a little bit, so my father had to devise a muzzle for him. So then if a big man came in and Snooky really didn't feel like... Uh, like putting up a tussle, he'd run in the box. So if he ran in the box, of course, that wasn't much of a, of a show. So then 
They said, well, okay, you have to put Snooky's shoulders on the floor, and it became a wrestling match. Three men at a time couldn't put Snooky in the box if he didn't want to go in the box. I've seen three, three big men at a time go in with Snooky. I've seen all kinds of situations. I've seen people go in there that, uh, that really thought they were going to mop up on that little monkey, and that little monkey just stomped the daylights out of them, you know? Uh, a 100-pound chimp in his own environment there's no way and when he's when he's in the cage with bars over his head so he can swing on him he's in his environment he can uh, he, you, there's no match two men there's no way that two men could go in there and be any type of match I don't care if they were 250 pounds a piece and a chimp weigh 100 pounds no match well we had a sign up after we'd known a while no show guaranteed to last over five seconds maximum five minutes because the average fellow would go along and long and he'd get played out and we afraid he would something would happen to him, you know. I had some that women go in long as they thought as long as they do what you tell them, they'd go all right. But if they get rough then he would get rough with them. And we had sometimes three women in that one time. Donna's foot race, yeah, it was more of a foot race than it was a wrestling match. They were running and screaming and hollering, you know, he was they I said, now don't let him tear your britches off, and that, that, that's it, that's it. And, and I've seen it happen probably in the hundreds of times where they pull the britches off, where a guy's standing there with, a, with no britches on. When, you, when the chimp grabs the britches at the bottom in the pants leg, the weakest seam in pants, seemingly, it was always the center seam that ran up, down, up through the crotch and back down the other leg. And I've seen men standing in there a lot of times with that s stitching tore out all the way around. So they have a short skirt on and they don't realize it, but they don't have anything. When they bend over, they're all, they're, you know, their crowd is out there laughing and they don't really know why because they're excited with what they're doing with the chimp. We used to show little towns like Pungo and Lowland and Chinky Pen and Little towns that had a store and didn't have electricity. Not even the store had electricity. The dirt roads. And I'd get in the truck and I'd ride around the countryside and maybe come across some other stores and tell them over the loudspeakers and people out in the field, it's gonna be a free show at, say, Fox's Corner tonight and everybody's invited, free show at eight o'clock tonight and go on down the road to where more people were working. And that night at Fox's Corner, or whatever corner it happened to be, we would, we would have a crowd, maybe. 20, 30, 50, 100, and, it, and if we stayed there a week, it might grow to 150, 200 people. As the show's popularity grew, so did the number of newspaper and television reporters waiting to get that special interview. I understand you got a couple that wrestle. Yes, sir. We got uh, two of them that wrestle and one that boxes. Now, they, they're chimpanzees. We put a muzzle and gloves on them, and uh, we believe they can whip the toughest men that walks. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've had about 40,000 people in that cage in the last 31 years. How, how, how long do they have to stay in there to collect well they get five dollars just to walk in and sometimes they give me 25 they would give me 25 to open the door right quick and let them out in fact <laughs> last night one would give me 50 i believe <laughs> forming a close relationship with any primate requires a bond of trust between man and animal the knolls have achieved the remarkable ability to convey trust through love to the casual observer this trust can seem unconditional but when interacting daily with a full-grown male chimpanzee, harsh lessons can be learned about their unpredictability. In 1953, uh, I was showing in New Orleans, out of New Orleans about 60 miles, and uh, we was putting on a wrestling match with the local people and the chimps. And when I split up the chimps that evening, put them in the cage, ready to fight, and. Uh, Female went in all right. The male, he didn't want to go in. If I'd have given him a banana or something, he'd have went on in there. But I was going to put him in anyhow, and wham, he 
backed up and bit my fingers off, bit my hand off. That hand was a lot worse than them fingers. The bones and leaders were bit into in there. And uh, after that, uh, we bought this place in Florida just more for winter quarters than anything else to winter in. But then uh, we liked it so well that one of the gorillas, we didn't know it when we bought it, had TB. He was bad shape. He just couldn't get around. He couldn't hardly get around. And we kept waiting on him, waiting on him until we got uh, doctors down from uh, Minneapolis to check him over. We had to check all of them and found out he had TB. And so we, we didn't want to go on the road with him and we, we thought a lot of him. And uh, after that, uh, we decided to stay here after the gorillas got sick. Well, all my life, I've always been reverted to the land and always was adapted to the land because in my heart, that's where the land is where it's at. And I always did like animals for some reason or other. And then um, I traveled around, wanted a place to come where it was warm, so I landed in the middle of a chimp farm, I guess about 30 years ago. And now, uh, over the period of years, they seem to accumulate a lot of these animals, which at one time were people's pets. See, a lot of people mean well, but they don't understand because a lot of people just see a chimp when he's on TV, and on TV, they're generally under seven. So we have a tendency to get a little programmed, and uh, when they see a gorilla on TV, they're uh, programmed to that gorilla's a big, vicious animal. So what happens when people buy a chimp and humanize them, or they alter them by taking teeth out or, or a castrate them, then you have an animal that nobody seems to want. So over a period of years, they accumulated about maybe 20 or so chimps here. Again, they're, 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 everyone is raised different. My father was a better ape man I'll ever be, Mr. Knoll. He handled animals, a gorilla, 625 pounds, walked around like a dog, but that was his friend. And like he even said, and you heard him say, he took a lot of these animals out of love. Uh, it's a labor of love, and people don't look at love. They're looking at a cage. Why don't you paint? Why don't you fix? Why don't you do that? Advice is good, but it's pretty hard to spend. Most of the people who are really knowledgeable are delighted that these animals are being bred because they're all being killed off in the jungles. And not all of them, of course, because there are a couple of ref refuges out there. But they are in the minority. You know, they're being killed off hand over fist. All of the animals that are in the wild now are in imminent danger, especially the gorillas are in danger now because there's a war going on in their territory and they're being killed for spite. And there's a lot of, a lot of problems with people cutting down trees and moving into their territory and wiping them out and setting out traps for little deer to capture the animals that they don't intend to capture and maim them or destroy them. So this is sort of a refuge and a breeding colony and we're looking uh, towards conservation hoping that our great-grandchildren will be able to see a live chimpanzee. And there are a lot of people who think we're a couple of nuts, and I agree, because I would never ask anybody to do what we're doing, what we have done, because it's very confining. We have had practically no social life because all our life is wrapped up in these animals. I don't go out to cocktail parties. I don't go to tea parties. I don't go to bridge games. I don't do any of that stuff. My whole life is centered around these animals. And the Knolls uh, have cared for these, some of these gorillas and chimps for a, a lifetime. And they helped to teach me about the animals and help me to understand a little bit about what their role is there. And uh, I had a very wonderful moment of seeing the interchange between Mr. Knoll and some baby orangutans. And you could see that the, the monkeys regarded him as a father figure, that he would come up to the cage and they would hold hands and and, uh, and it was a very beautiful thing. In the early days, virtually nothing was known about the great ape's behavior, care, or breeding habits. By actually living with the animals, the Knoll's direct observation and day-to-day -day contact became invaluable in providing for the primates' specialized needs. For example, Otto, the baby gorilla with tuberculosis, was also found to be suffering with arthritis. Through daily care, devotion, and medication, Mr. and Mrs. Knoll raised Otto to be one of the finest and healthiest lowland gorillas in captivity. In fact, over 55 baby chimpanzees 
and five baby orangutans have been born at the chimp farm in Tarpon Springs, Florida. This rare footage is of Jewel, an orangutan, being born in 1968. Bob Noel was probably the only person in the world to daily play and interact with a full-grown 600-pound gorilla. With nothing more than voice commands and a dog leash, Bob romped, played, and befriended Tommy, one of the many gorillas the Knowles have raised since 1950. As virtual pioneers in the study of gorillas, chimpanzees, and orangutans, a field that was clouded by myth and exaggeration, the Knowles actually prefaced future scientific study of ape behavior by such dedicated people as George Schaller, Diane Fossey, and Jane Goodall. For years, we ran after chimps when they were running away and playing tag with us, and they will tease you to exhaustion. And we discovered that there's a way, after reading about the fact that the animals do have sentries all around their uh, family groups, and when something dangerous comes up, if one of these animals gives the danger signal and runs, then everybody follows him. So what I came up with, and I don't know if anybody else has figured this out or not, but I tell everybody that has a chimp about it, and you don't use it but once or twice in a lifetime and only when the animal is running into danger and, or you need to do it fast. What you do is you point behind the animal and you say, woo, 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 and you, like you're terrified and then you turn and run in the other direction and the animal will follow you. And that nine times out of 10, he'll jump up in your arms for protection. Since the chimpanzees and gorillas had helped the gnolls earn their living by entertaining and educating thousands upon thousands of people across the eastern seaboard of the United States, Bob and May Noel felt that it was only fair for the animals to retire with them in 1971 at their winter quarters, which was purchased in 1954 in Tarpon Springs, Florida. Soon after the chimp farm was built, it had become a sanctuary for injured and unwanted primates. With these animals, a breeding colony was started and has since become world famous as a place where people of all ages can observe the great apes and many other species of animals face to face. The cages these animals live in are their homes. They enjoy and need the security of four walls, a roof, regular meals, fresh water, and plenty of love and attention. None of these animals would survive if returned to the wild because all were either born in captivity or captured as infants by their original owners. Some of the animals came here because they were very sick and in desperate need for help. Others came because their owners were either unable or unwilling to give them the constant attention needed for their continued health and well-being. Adopting any animal is a decision that can place great demands on the new owner's ability to provide adequate care. Supplying veterinarian services and understanding behavioral differences are just some of the hurdles that must be overcome. The Knowles have never shirked this demanding responsibility. They and a handful of dedicated volunteers still carry on this important job, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Through times of uncertainty, the lucky animals that live at the chimp farm will never risk perils that surely would be their future as long as the Knowles are able to continue this truly remarkable labor of love. Where 
his kids Cause he wants to His cowboy hat has sure seen better days His clothes are great, he can use his shade You can tell he's living his life day to day But he wants to Circus Road, TV commercials and some picture shows. He's even got a few, I'll bet you know. And some sick house Then every chance you get, I'm sure you'd go. If only just to stop and say hello. To a man I'm really proud, I got to know. still get one to eat. Everything's in good shape. They come up coming here to hardly walk. You wouldn't think you could live. They come in in bad shape. And no time hardly just plenty to eat and plenty of good water to drink and they come out of it. <laughs> 